Hi guys. Some people asked if I could give them a little guidance on problems four and five. So I went ahead and printed out a sheet for four. It says a physics student skis down a hill, accelerating at a constant two meters per second squared. If it takes her 15 seconds to reach the bottom, what is the length of the slope? So we went ahead and drew a picture of a skier on the hill. We'll mark that at zero meters. Let's say down the slope is a positive direction. We were given two meters per second squared, which is the rate of acceleration, 15 seconds, which is our change in time. And they want us to find the length of the slope. In other words, how far she's gonna go down the hill. So we're gonna look at for the change in position. Uh, we were asked to sketch out position versus time and velocity versus time graphs for this. So if we've got somebody starting at rest and speeding up in a positive direction, we're just gonna have that. Our velocity versus time graph is here, which 15 seconds is this value, um, but we don't know the, the maximum velocity. We could calculate it, I guess, if we know the rate of acceleration and that. Um, so we could go ahead and figure that, figure out the final velocity from the acceleration. Um, but I thought we could use that big equation we started with the other day with change of position equals one half the acceleration times the change in time squared. Now that originally came with plus a velocity at time zero, but we're gonna assume that her starting velocity is zero from rest, right? Um, so let's decide that starting velocity is zero. Um, so we can just plug it in from there and go. The acceleration was two meters per second squared times our change in time, which is 15 seconds, which has to be squared. Um, keeping all this the same, two meters per second squared. 15 seconds times 15 seconds is 225 seconds squared. Um, and our change of position, one half of two is one, and one times 225 is 225 meters per second squared times second squared, second squared cancel out. And the length of the slope is 225 meters. Uh, for the second one down here, it says a dog runs down a driveway with an initial speed of five meters per second um, for eight seconds and universally increases the speed well, let's think about what that's going to look like. You have the dog. Well, that's going to be an ugly dog. Yeah, that's a pretty bad dog. Give the dog a tail. And this thing's hauling booty down the driveway. All right, so there's my dog. And let's say it starts at zero meters. It's moving in a positive direction. Um, I'm thinking about the velocity versus time graph first. So if you move at a constant velocity and then speed up, that means it would go at a constant velocity for a while. And then at eight seconds, it speeds up to double the velocity, which I guess is 10. And that's over the next five seconds, so that'd be the 13 second mark. Let's see, our position versus time graph would be, what, constant velocity and then speeding up. So it'd have to be a straight line, and then from there it would speed up. So our position versus time graph would be a straight line and then a top open curve. I don't think that's going to be very useful, but they want to find a uh, the acceleration and how long the driveway is. So what did they give us? The velocity at time zero, five meters per second. Um, velocity initial, which would be the eight second mark, is still five meters per second. And then the velocity at 13 seconds is 10 meters per second. So we're gonna have two change of times here. We're gonna have change in time one is eight seconds, and change in time two is five seconds. And they want us to find the acceleration and find the displacement. 
Well, the acceleration would only be for phase two, right? And we, for phase two, we have a starting velocity, a final velocity, and a change in time. So that's how you could find the acceleration. And for the displacement, we could, um, I think for the displacement, we're gonna have to solve it two different ways, no matter what, because you're gonna have to solve the constant velocity portion and then separately the uniform acceleration part. So you've got a couple options. You could break this into a big rectangle and a small triangle and add those shapes together, or you'd have to calculate the change of position for the constant velocity part and then uh, use the equation, the full equation from up here to calculate the change in position during the accelerating part. I hope that helps.